quite like an animal at home. I think that would make the place feel a little bit more sort of cosy. Give us a cheer if you've got a pet at home. Yes. There's loads of you. See, I'd quite like a cat. If I could have any animal, I'd probably have a cat. But I can't have a cat because my boyfriend's allergic to cats, so I can't have one. Flower. Well, precisely, flower. <laughs> will split up and that will sort it out. Most people don't have something to look forward to at the end of a relationship, do they? I can't wait till he starts fucking other women. <laughs> I'm after the pet shop, won't you? <laughs> but if I did get an animal, I'd have to be careful, because whenever I had animals as a child, I always loved them a little bit too much. <laughs> There's a name for people like me, it's a hamster squeezer. <laughs> When I was about seven, I had a little dog and I loved it so much. Have you ever stroked a dog so hard you could see the whites of its eyes? <laughs> they have any stroke along its back, its little back legs buckle because of the pressure. <laughs> I do worry about my boyfriend. Because <laughs> I love him so much. <laughs> love him so much. <laughs> be red. No. <laughs> that's a great reaction. The women are laughing and the blokes are going, don't do that. That's not fucking funny. <laughs> now it's probably quite a good time to tell you that I'm a lot ruder than I am on the telly. <laughs> and, uh, and there was one year that it was an animal calendar that we were using. It had funny animal pictures and sort of funny animal quips underneath. And my mum came over to where we were gluing and she went, see that one there? And I went, uh-huh. She went, don't give that one to your nana. And I went, OK. And I asked her recently, I said, can you remember what that picture was of? She said, yes, I remember very well. She said it was a raccoon clinging onto a branch. And underneath it said, I'm barely hanging on as it is. <laughs> Could you give me a word if you do sleep naked? <laughs> and if you don't? <laughs> the main reason I don't sleep naked is we've got a cat who's an arsehole. <laughs> And if your toes are popping out the end of the duvet, he will nibble on them. Imagine what he'd do to me, Fanny. I'm not risking it. <laughs> not risking it. I, I decided to get a pet. I've always grown up with pets and in my teens and in my 20s. And then there's something about the lifestyle of being a comedian. That means you're on the road a lot. It's not really conducive to having animals at home. And then I thought, you know, I've done this eight years. Maybe it's time the lifestyle worked around me for a change. So I really wanted a cat. So I got a cat two years ago. I got another cat last year. My fella seems to think I just wanted two cats. He doesn't realise it's now an annual event. <laughs> the second cat we got is a rescue cat. She was just left outside of the vets in a box overnight, just left. And she's lovely, she's very affectionate. Whenever my fella picks her up, she starts purring straight away and he looks her right in the face and he goes, Who would abandon you? Who would abandon you? <laughs> I said, stop saying that to her. <laughs> it's like somebody saying to me, who would divorce you? <laughs> Someone fucking did. <laughs> but I do worry that I tell people a bit too soon in any conversation that I've got cats. I've got cats, it's too soon, it's too soon. <laughs> I've got cats, that's lovely, and your account number is. <laughs> That's because they're not too bad in the middle, but I've often got big scratches on my arms and I don't want anybody to ever misconstrue what those scratches are. I don't want anybody to ever leave my company going, she seemed really happy, but did you see her arms? <laughs> when truth be told, it's because I cuddle them too tight and the fuckers fight back. <laughs> But the first cat we got uh, two years ago, a little ginger kitten, he's called Chief Brody, named after the police chief in Jaws. I was still living in the flat at the time, and I thought, I'll let him have a wander around, get his bearings, have a bit of a sniff, a bit of an investigate. And he went round the back of the sofa, and I was quite surprised, because I'd lived there for six years, and I'd never been round the back of the sofa. <laughs> and the hoover certainly fucking hadn't. <laughs> and he came back round with what can only be described as four big grey fluffy slippers on. <laughs> So I sent him back round to finish the job. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever tried to litter train a cat. It's normally quite straightforward. Whenever they look like they're about to do something, you pick them up and you plonk them in the litter tray. You hope for the best. But Chief Brody took a while to cotton on, kept having it laxed into poor bugger. 
And at one point, my fellow and I were standing over the litter tray, just looking at each other, going, is there anything we could be doing to help him that we're not already doing? And my fellow, because he's so lovely, he looked down at the litter tray and he went, do you want me to do a shit in it to start him off? <laughs> no. No, I really don't. <laughs> it would be end to end. <laughs> I'd be like, who the fuck lives here? Aslan. <laughs> but I have two friends who look after my cats when I'm away from home. One of them is an animal lover, one not so much. Give us a cheer if you consider yourself an animal lover. Yeah. Give us a cheer if you're not really bothered. Yeah. It's totally fine, isn't it? It's totally fine. My friend who is the animal lover, she looks after them because she loves them. My friend who isn't the animal lover, she looks after them because she loves me. It's very sweet. So the friend who is the animal lover, when she looks after them, she'll take a photograph of them to send to me. And underneath the photograph, it'll say, Hiya, ma'am. Because they call me ma'am. It's not weird. Fuck off. <laughs> and I know that we're close, because whenever I see them, they always need a shit. <laughs> so I say, Hiya, ma'am. We miss you. We'll see you soon. And it settles me. Wherever I am in the country or the world, it settles me, because I know that they're safe and that they're happy. My friend who isn't the animal lover takes a picture just the same. But underneath her picture, it'll say, here is the photograph you requested. <laughs> they are still alive. I will check again tomorrow. <laughs> but they are house cats. They don't go outside. They will go outside at some point. But I'm sort of nervous. I'm nervous. I'm nervous for their safety, but also I'm a little bit worried about what they might bring back in with them. I know this is a thing that cats do. Have we got cat owners in tonight? Yeah. Quite a few of you. Now, I know that whatever they bring in, be it a mouse or a bird, uh, if it's still alive, I'm going to try and catch it and put it back in the garden. And if it's dead, I'm going to put it in the outside bin. That's fine. But what I don't know is what I'm supposed to do if whatever they bring in is still a little bit... <laughs> twitchy. Has this happened to any of you? Yeah. Oh, nearly all of you. This is horrible. <laughs> Let's get some suggestions what you think I should do. Let's start at the top. So anybody in the top section got a suggestion what I should do with a half-dead animal? Shout out. Put a bucket over it. Put a bucket over it. <laughs> Have you done that, love? Yes. Yes. What animal was it? A bird and a mouse and a rat. A bird and a mouse and a rat at the same time. <laughs> like a tiny little rubbish zoo. <laughs> So are these all separate occasions? Separate. Yes. And so you put the bucket over it until... The husband came home. Oh. <laughs> until your husband came home. <laughs> We've got a feminist in, girls. <laughs> and then what did he do? Luckily they'd all died. Luckily they'd all died. <laughs> that is the best sentence I've heard in ages. <laughs> We should all start adding that on to the end of all of our stories. Luckily, they all died. <laughs> Good answer, lady upstairs. Anybody in the next section down got a suggestion what I should do with a half-dead animal? Hit it with a spade. Hit it with a spade? <laughs> he didn't even have to think of that, did he? Just hit it with a spade. <laughs> hit it with... Is that, have you done that, love? Yes. Yes? <laughs> Was it definitely an animal? <laughs> got a couple of ex-wives in your garden or anything. <laughs> Anybody else in that section? CPR. CPR? Oh. oh. You, the rest of you feel like such shits now. <laughs> CPR. Have you done that? Yes. Yes. What animal was it, love? Cat. It was a cat. <laughs> Either. Option one. She has not understood the question. <laughs> Option two, her cat brought in another cat. <laughs> I'm going to go with option two, because that feels awesome to me. <laughs> Anybody in the next section down got a suggestion what I should do with a half-dead animal? Give it back to us so we can finish it off. <laughs> give, it back to the, give it back to the cat so, so we can finish it off. And when you, OK, when you say finish it off... All right, sorry, you mean eat it. OK, sorry, I wasn't... <laughs> One tiny final wank. <laughs> and a cat couldn't even do that because they don't have that kind of hands. It'd have to do it with its paws. <laughs> well, you've just made me mime a cat wanking off a mouse. <laughs> <You> dirty bastards. <laughs> 
So you mean give it back to the cat so the cat can eat it? I like that idea because that feels like good parenting, doesn't it? Because it's like, finish your tea or you're not playing out. <laughs> The last time we were in Pets at Home, they had a special section to one side of animals that had been reduced. Just let that sink in for a second. <laughs> reduced. It was one of the saddest things I think I've ever seen. They had a big rabbit in a hutch, much bigger than the other sort of sexy rabbits. <laughs> sexy is not the right word, is it? <laughs> Depends on the rabbit. <laughs> Thank you. And the big rabbit, to make it that little bit more heartbreaking, they'd written a sign for it in the first person. And the sign said, Hi, I'm Honey. I'm a little bit bigger than the other rabbits. I'm a little bit older than the other rabbits. Please take me home. I thought you never expect to come face to face with a rabbit equivalent of your teenage self. I didn't buy it. It's got to learn. pets when we were kids we had rabbits and budgies and hamsters and fish and dogs with loads of things but whenever they died we were never told that we were just told some story instead some lie anybody else have this yeah yeah, yeah. what lies were you told shout out oh. gone to a farm what animal was it love a dog oh it's still in your voice isn't it flower dog <laughs> farm dog can't talk anymore there was a lady the other day she said uh, my rabbit never died I said, what? My rabbit never died. It's just sometimes a different colour. <laughs> and occasionally it was a guinea pig. <laughs> Any others apart from the dog on the farm? Snail what was that, love? Snail Your snail ran away. <laughs> Snail's not a pet, love. But did it have a name? No. no. That's why it ran away, Flower. Because he didn't give a shit. Any others? Swam down the toilet. I take it it was a fish, was it, love? Yes? Yeah, it was a... Oh, bless you. Yes. Ooh. Went for a holiday in the lavvy. It was a lady the other day, um, she said that she'd had a, a, a goldfish and when it had died, she'd been told that it swam away, out of the bowl. <laughs> and while I was talking to her, but a chat broke out at the other side of the audience and I thought, I better see what's going on over here. So I finished with a lady whose fish had swam away out of the bowl and I looked across here and I said, what's going on? And over here was a lady in her 50s, another lady in her 70s, uh, potentially mother and daughter. And I said, what's happening? What had happened? The lady in her 50s had gone, hey, that's a shame, isn't it? That that lady was lied to about her fish swimming away. Because my fish actually swam away, didn't it, ma'am? <laughs> and the old lady was pissing herself laughing. <laughs> but we had the farm one. We were told gone to live on a farm to keep an old man company. When it happened to our dog, we were gutted. When it happened to me, Nana, we were thrilled. <laughs> But my favourite one was a young Geordie lad when I did the Edinburgh Festival last year. He said he'd had terrapins and he'd been told they'd left to join the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. You know what would be great is if you liked and subscribed. I'm so needy. I'm so sorry. Uh, and why not come and see me live? And uh, the tickets are available at sarahmillican.co.uk. Put the kettle on and settle in.